this demonstration, you're going to see how to build applications with Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Service. We're going to start by creating a new application called the Travel Approval Application. In this application, we're going to tie and automate a process of approving travel requests that currently is done through an Excel spreadsheet. When you go into Visual Builder Cloud Service, you can create mobile or web applications, you can connect to external REST services, or you can work with your own business object. In addition, you can integrate with processes. We're going to start from the business object perspective. You can create a new business object manually, or you can take some shortcuts. For example, you can use our data manager to import business objects based on Excel spreadsheets. For example, here is an Excel spreadsheet that contains information about airlines as well as information about travel requests. Our wizard allows you to import those two business objects, see their specific fields, and even modify the type of the field that is being used. Once you finish the import operation, you would have two business objects that you can work with. Let's look at the travel request business object. Here is the list of fields in this object. You can now add additional fields. For example, let's add the approved field, which would be a Boolean field. For each field, you can set a set of properties. For example, we can say that the default value for an approved field is false. Let's add one more field, which will be the airline field. This, of course, is going to reference our other business object, the airline business object, and would populate from a list of airlines provided by this business object. In addition, you can define business rules, security aspects, and you can also see the endpoints, which are REST services that allow you to access the data in those business objects. So this is our current business object. Now let's go over and create our first web application. you'll be taken into our visual page editor. In here, you have a list of components on the left side, and you can simply drag and drop them to position them on the main area of your screen, and then set properties for them. Let's add a horizontal rule below the title. Next, we're going to populate the page with a table. The table component can be bind into some data, and the data can come from our business object. So let's pick up the travel request business object, and then we can choose which fields we want to show. So we'll show the traveler, where is it traveling from and where to. We'll show the approval status and the cost. You can then reorder the fields by dragging and dropping them. So here's our information. Next, we can add an edit page. This will allow us to update the data for a travel request. This is going to, again, allow us to choose which fields we want to be able to update. When you click Finish, the next page will be created. At this point, you can simply click the Run button to run your application. Applications open up in a browser. You can choose a travel request, click to edit the travel request, change information, and approve the travel request. And the data is reflected in the table. You can also simulate running the application directly in your development environment. Simply click on the live mode and your application functions directly inside your development environment. Let's modify this page a little bit. For example, maybe we want to add another section to the page that gets information from a REST service. If we go back to our application, we can define a service connection. Services can come from our service catalog pre-populated with Oracle SaaS services defined by specification if you have, for example, a swagger description of your service, or directly by their endpoint, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to paste the URL to a 
generic REST service that returns information about a specific country based on the code of the country. You can provide a name for the service. You can set security aspects if required. Set information about the request, including URL parameters, will give a default value. And you can even test the web service directly from your interface. Once you verify this is the correct format of the reply, you can copy this into the response, and Visual Builder would automatically create the access to this REST service. Let's go back to our web application. Our web application uses a flow, so we can look at the page flow over here, and we want to modify the Edit Travel Request page. To this page, we want to add information about the specific country that the person is visiting. So let's add a couple of UI components. We'll add a text item, which will um, show us the capital of the country. And we'll add an image that would show us the flag of the country. Again, you can set properties directly from the property inspector. Now let's connect it to our REST service. To do that, we need to define a new variable. And let's first define a type of variable. We'll base the variable on the service endpoint. Give a name to this. And choose which fields are interesting to us. We can choose all the fields if we want to. Once we have a type, we can define a variable of this type. And this will contain the information that we fetched about the country. Now we can use the variable we defined to connect the fields in our page to this variable using this simple expression editor. So we wanted to show the capital over here, and we wanted the image over here to be based on the country info and the flag that is being fetched. The last step is to connect a UI component that will allow us to call the REST service to get this additional information. So let's add a button over here, and we'll call it more info. A button can have a set of events. So let's add a new event on a click of a button. And this is our visual action flow editor. You can see a bunch of actions that you can take, and you can simply drag and drop them to add them to your action. So the first action we're going to do is call a REST endpoint, this would call our REST service. We can map the input parameter to the value of the current to destination. We use our visual mapping editor. Once we call the REST service, we're going to get a value back information about the country, and we can assign this to the variable on the page. So we'll take the results from the country call and place it into this variable, again using our visual mapper. We are now ready to run our application. We can click on a specific travel request, update the information about this travel request, and also get information about the capital and the flag by clicking the More Info button. One more point to make about the development is while you saw the visual way of developing an application, you also have direct access to the code. This allows you to see the actual code of your page and modify directly in a browser-based code editor. For example, let's duplicate this section of the page. We're going to give um, different IDs here. And we're going to change this from fetching the capital to fetching another piece of information. As you can see, you have code insight into your variables. In addition, you have functionality such as reformat, find, replace, and rename for your code. Switch back to the visual view, and now we can see that in addition to the capital, we see the name of the country. 
This is how productive it is to develop an application with Visual Builder Cloud Service.